A bid to keep warming centers in Toronto open around the clock until mid-April has been rejected by City Council. The motion before Council was amended, and the version that was approved calls on City staff to study the feasibility of providing 24-7 drop-in spaces. It also calls on the province to require large municipalities to provide shelter space proportionate to their population. And it seeks to have Ottawa provide funding for refugees seeking emergency shelter in Toronto. Councillor Michael Thompson put forward the amended motion. To put a comprehensive system in place in the city of Toronto with respect to warming centres, we don't, first of all, have the personnel resources to put in place. The financial resources that has been expressed that it will cost each facility, each centre will cost about $400,000 to implement. Um, we don't have those funds and so the necessity of getting funding for an expansion in the program requires us, as we are always required to do, which we loathe to do, which is to go to the province and the feds to ask for more resources. Crisis is so important because if you live in this city, if you ride transit, if you use our public services, if you've been listening, then you will know that there is a crisis of homelessness in Toronto and we have to name it and we have to act on it. And today, right now, this council decided not to act on it and 24-7 um, warming spaces in the city will not be available to people and we're going to be putting people's safety, health and lives at risk. Currently, warming centres only open when the temperature drops to minus 15. There have been occasions where warming centres were opened in the absence of an extreme cold weather alert at the city's discretion. During the latest cold snap, the city's downtown centres hit capacity and staff worked to redirect those in need to the shelter system. Toronto Mayor John Tory released a statement reading in part, Today, Council voted to call on the provincial government to require all large municipalities in Ontario to provide shelter space proportionate to their population and for the federal government to provide funding and support for refugees seeking emergency shelter in Toronto. City Council also requested shelter support and housing administration to include the feasibility of providing 24-7 drop-in spaces either at City of Toronto facilities or at locations provided by community and faith-based institutions. CP24's Christina Tenalia is live with the very latest on this story. Christina. Yeah, we want to get some reaction to this. I want to introduce Dr. Nahid Dazani, who is a palliative care physician and a, excuse me, health justice activist. Dr. Dazani, as always, thank you for joining us. Thanks for having me on. Uh, Dr. Dazani, I want to ask you, what will the impact of this be with the month that we have left here in the winter season? In short, the impact will be devastating. People who experience homelessness will have to deal with more of what many of my healthcare colleagues and I are already seeing. Hypothermia, cold-related injuries, frostbite, swelling, infection, and the worsening of pre-existing illnesses like mental illness and substance use. As a physician who provides health care for people who experience homelessness, I'm left wondering, how is it possible that something so simple as shelter and warmth to prevent hypothermia and death could be so controversial in one of the wealthiest cities in the world. Today's vote was heartbreaking and devastating. And on that note, Dr. Dazani, let's talk about what options are there for those who are most vulnerable in our city if it is cold out, but not cold enough, not an extreme cold weather alert where a warming center opens up? Because we know that this creates, and I say this diplomatically, a burden on the TTC and the healthcare system for people who, who just need somewhere warm to gather that is frankly not the TTC or a hospital. They need somewhere to go. Absolutely. This is an issue that has downstream consequences and a ripple effect will potentially happen. Many people will just suffer um, on park benches and on the streets with cold related injuries and might even freeze to death. But many others will try to seek warmth and many will try to seek warmth in health care. And we know that's not a good use of our health care dollars and has the potential to take up spaces for other folks who are medically in need. And so not only was today's decision a cruel decision, but it wasn't a sound economic or logical decision. That's why the Ontario Human Rights Commission is speaking out, health workers, healthcare institutions, and I don't think they're going to stop speaking out.
Mm -hmm. And I know you won't either. Dr. Dazani, thank you so much for your time tonight. Thanks a lot. Have a great night. Okay, you as well. Lindsay, Kayla, back to you. Christina, thank you.